All right. Well, let's get started. Only an hour to cram a lot of information in. Um, so we'll get started with our fourth and final session of Matrix Networks Unified Communication and Contact Center um, educational series to kick off 2021. Uh, so far during this journey, folks, we've gone through three different educational sessions. We kicked off this whole thing with integrated applications featuring partners Ring Central. As most of you know, Ring Central has been a partner in our portfolio for several years now. So in that session, we were really highlighting something unique, you know, the broad base of applications that can be integrated into your unified communication experience to overcome a variety of different channels. We hope that you got a lot out of that conversation. You know, the second one was all about white label, you know, a matrix networks managed phone system. We call that solution MTOC. And lastly, we had the customer journey through contact center. You know, this transition that we're having from what is seen as a contact center as a cubicle farm and hundreds of agents just isn't the case anymore. And you know, what does that really look like and how can we influence our buyers and customers experience through modern technology, through contact center that featured five nines, as well as Ring Central Engage. All of these sessions, for those of you that didn't have the chance to view them live, are available on our Matrix Networks YouTube channel. So I highly recommend you go check those out if you didn't have the opportunity to view those um, when we originally aired them. But those were the first three. This is the fourth and final. So thank you for everyone that has joined us today. Um, Matrix did this, this journey on communication systems because we find ourselves in a critical juncture in society, obviously, but also as a business community. You know, many organizations still haven't migrated to modern technology when it comes to their communication systems. The challenge that everyone knows is about this time last year, everyone had to move home and start working remote. And you know, most organizations uh, that hadn't migrated to a cloud-based phone system met that challenge by forwarding calls to cell phones. Sound familiar? I'm assuming that it does for a majority of you on this call today. Uh, what that led to was a lack of unity. You know, it led to a lack of features and benefits commonly associated with a modern cloud-based communication solution. Lack of professionalism, quite frankly. But it was a band-aid that many organizations and IT leaders had to strap on and make do with what they had. Um, we now know that we have options, right? And the time has come. And so this first quarter's educational series from Matrix was to deliver the, the latest and greatest and in innovative technology for communications enterprise class communication solutions. Um, but you can't really have that conversation without talking about Zoom. You know, uh, Zoom overnight really transformed the way that we communicate, the way that we do business, not just um, individuals, but as a business community, you know, business to business, business to consumer, Zoom really transformed the way that we communicate as organizations. And this, what was meetings platform and webinar platform literally became a verb in a matter of weeks. Um, and now that verb is, is, is much more, honestly. You know, I don't know if it was timing or luck of the draw, but Zoom was already working on a Zoom phone prior to the pandemic. It was the, the fact that the pandemic happened to propel them to verb status that allows us to showcase them today as much more than a meetings and webinar platform. Today, they are a phone system as well, integrating both your meetings platform, your webinar platform, and your unified communication and collaboration all into one seamless application. So it is um, with great pleasure for not only myself, but Matrix Networks to introduce Derek Ressler, uh, a Zoom phone enablement specialist, to walk us through this transformation. Um, hopefully address any questions that you have along the way. This is a webinar, you've all been on one. Feel free to utilize the Q&A feature. We'd be happy to address those live for everyone on the call today. And obviously Matrix Networks is here as your partner uh, to follow up today's webinar and address your specific use case. So with that, I'm gonna pass it over to Derek 
And Mr. Ressler, the floor is yours. All right, thanks very much, uh, Brian, for that introduction. And thanks for all of you uh, being willing to spend a portion of your uh, day to day with us learning more about the Zoom application. So, uh, you know, my hope is that this is going to be more of an interactive session. I'll be asking some questions of you, and I would love to hear some responses and kind of hear your feedback because at the end of the day, it's really about you and it's about the customer and about your happiness and about getting the right solution that fits your organization the best. And that's obviously why you leverage Matrix to help you navigate the waters. They've got, you know, obviously wild, I mean, a wide breadth of knowledge and expertise, and they really understand this UCAS world. So great partners. So thanks for having us on, uh, Ryan and the team. Um, I'm very excited to be here. So when I start off, I want to kind of start off with, um, you know, safe harbor statement. We've been told here at Zoom, we got to start saying this. And so everything I say on this is obviously subject to change at any point in time. But I want to hear from you. So use the chat box for this. Zoom and webinar, Zoom meetings, Zoom meetings, Zoom webinar. Okay, I'm kind of getting the pattern here uh, that a uh, majority of you guys out there use Zoom meetings or Zoom webinar. And some of you might even use Zoom, Zoom rooms, like Tony has two Zoom rooms. Um, and hopefully that's working well for you guys. So uh, by and large, you guys are very typical of a current Zoom customer. Um, you guys have been experiencing the Zoom meetings and hopefully it's been a great experience uh, for you guys. And uh, this Zoom phone side might be a new item that you never even thought we even did before, to Ryan's point. We have been delivering Zoom phone prior to um, the pandemic, uh, but the interest in the phone and the UCAS platform has really skyrocketed, as you would assume, um, as any, everything cloud has uh, because of this situation. And so we're gonna take a look at that. So it's really good to hear from you guys. So thanks for, uh, for stick, sticking with us here and just using the Q&A box for that. Um, I've got some helpers helping me assist with the Q&A, so I apologize, we just got inundated with a whole bunch of stuff. Um, but please, if you have questions, when you have questions, put it in there and we've got people who can respond or can respond live. So the first thing I want you guys to really understand is, is the Zoom truly is an experience, all right? It's simply more than just a phone or a meetings or a webinar, it is a true platform experience. So what do I mean by that? I mean this. Historically, as you guys well well know, quick history lesson here, the conferencing world and the phone world have existed in parallel. At times they've integrated with each other, but by and large providers have been singly focused in either the collaboration piece or in the phone piece. And as they've moved forward, they've kind of cobbled together the solutions, whether via acquisition, I'm thinking like a Cisco um, or a Microsoft type concept, or they've developed their own, right, as they go through and, and everything else. Now, Zoom, where Zoom started, isn't necessarily in the audio conferencing world or on the on-premise phone world. Where we started was on the platform piece. Even though the meetings application and the webinar application how the majority of you experience us today and have always experienced us, but it's been leveraging the same platform. And this is really big because the phone piece is self-developed. Everything Zoom does today is developed by us ourselves. No acquisition, uh, none of that type of technical stack that we're trying to force onto our platform. It's all self-generated. And what that does is it leads to quicker innovation and it leads to when that innovation does get delivered, it's in a high quality experience that you would expect to have. So we're not gonna have a bad version or, hey, look, you're going to want to skip this version because it was really, really bad, full of bugs, things didn't work well together. That doesn't happen here at Zoom. So uh, we grow, we've grow. grown very fast on the phone side, largely because the platform was already in, in globally distributed. I'll talk about it a little bit later, but it's already been put in place. Again, when we turn on Zoom phone two years ago, uh, beginning of 2019, it was a feature switch on. There was no extra architecture we had to put in place. There was no extra regulatory relationships we had to gain globally in order to have this in place. Uh, we were just building upon what we already had. We already had established carrier relationships for the PSDN calls. People have been calling into Zoom meetings all the time. I think I uh, 
see Will there said, we just used a dedicated dial in the Zoom meetings, right? So we've always been doing that. We've always been doing phone. We've always been processing all of those billions and billions of audio packets each and every day has always been a part of it. So now instead of pointing them towards IP addresses, we're pointing them towards DIDs and DDIs, depending where you're at. So the majority of our platform, again, was already in place. So all we did was layer on phone. We built out a phone piece with advanced PBX features, making sure that it was available in over 40 countries. And again, that goes to our platform already being established into the data center presence and those regulatory requirements already in place that we can go in less than two years from no country availability to over 44. So very, very, very quick. And obviously to be able to offer the delivery and the support services that you need as a customer in order to have a great experience, right? So we're able to do this very quickly and turn it on very quickly because we already had the infrastructure in place from a technology standpoint. And we already had the infrastructure in place from a headcount on the support side as well. And so we're ready to go already. So that's truly is the phone, the phone story. Uh, for those of you that, that, that don't know, um, phone's been around again, like I said, for two years. It's, we've put in over 400 feature ads into it in that two years, available in 44 countries. Uh, but the last two the ones I really want to talk about, number one is the Madra Quadrant. Um, that's run, done by Gartner, third party. Many of you might be something that you guys know extensively. Some of you might not be as familiar with it. I know the Matrix team is very familiar with Gartner. And it's basically a third party group that goes out and evaluates um, how successful or, or how ready to go certain uh, vendors are in certain industries. And so on our first time ever on UCAST, uh, it was our first time of being available to be on UCAST. We we're in the leaders quadrant, that upper right. So that's always where you want to be. So we're very excited. But the bigger point to make is how quickly organizations and customers just like yourself have moved from a Zoom meetings, Zoom rooms customer to being a Zoom phone customer. So in roughly seven quarters, we went from, again, no users on Zoom phone to over a million users on Zoom phone in only seven quarters. Uh, we've actually now, because this ended the end of 2000 or towards the end of the end of 2020, uh, we just announced we have over 1.3 million uh, users right now of Zoom phone. So that's just over eight quarters. We are adding a substantial amount of people to phone. And why is that? Because they already have deployed the platform. Their users and your users have already been using Zoom. They already know how to use Zoom. They already have it on their computer. So all it is, is they come in, and I'll show you this later, they log into their system, and they have phone deployed. It's that easy. Some on the back end on the admin portal, set them up with a dialing uh, plan, gave them a number, and said, here, make outbound calls now. It is that easy to deploy out globally for your organization. So a lot of cool stuff there. We're very excited about the, our customers and our customers' experience and how quickly they're delivering it. This goes back to that global footprint. I know some of you out there might love infrastructure and want to know where the data centers are and offices are and all that type stuff. So we are distributed over 19 data centers now. We do recognize data sovereignty in over seven other countries. So I'm talking your typical ones, your Japan, your Germany, your Singapore, your Australia, your Canada. Um, I think there's one or two that I'm forgetting off the top of my head, but we do um, uh, recognize those and have ways for you in the admin portal to make sure all your data is going to the right spot. So we have that in place, right? So we're able to deliver all this because again, our infrastructure is all out, active, active environments. And in North America, it's actually active, active, active environment for resiliency uh, and everything else. So you would, can expect to have a great experience with Zoom phone and Zoom UCAST. Flexible deployment options. This is another idea uh, that Zoom has that not many in our space have. So I know when the Ryan and team said, hey, look, Zoom, talk about what you do that maybe other people don't do. All right, this is one of those items. Uh, this middle box here is this idea of premise peering. Um, we will, for locations that we are not in, let's say you've got an office, um, you have needs in India and South Korea, and maybe some of those other Asian countries, and You've never been able to put them on the same phone system that you have here. 
or other people have around the world. We can do that for you through establishing a SIP trunk between our SPC and the cloud, the SPC of the on-premise solution, or the SPC with the carrier of choice that's being used in that country. And now every single one of those employees can leverage the same communication platform and be managed centrally, which is another huge piece. Managed centrally and have access to full features of the platform. And so it's a really big deal. They keep their current contracts in place, their current carrier uh, equipment in place. And then they just, when those calls are made, they're using the Zoom application to make them. When it routes out, it routes out uh, the existing uh, technology. So really big thing. If this is something that's of interest to you, again, Matrix team is here to help you. And that's why you leverage them to kind of help explore this option. But we're seeing a significant amount of interest on this because really only us and Microsoft do it this way. Um, most other UCAS providers don't, um, it can be very, very difficult and don't want to own the process, but we're definitely willing to do so. So uh, plenty of options for you to get going. Uh, question here, I'm going to take, take a step back. So a question came in from James. When will Zoom support direct route with Teams? Can I want you to kind of pin that question. Uh, Teams is something we are going to talk about a little bit later. So I want to handle that at that time period. So James, keep me honest and make sure we do answer it then. Um, so I can kind of dive into it at that time period. Hopefully that's uh, acceptable to you and we'll kind of answer that one live. So it is a great question, so thanks for asking. Um, so what are customers looking for in Zoom? So I've been doing this a lot for our partners, doing these customer facing ones and everything else. And what we're hearing from you is by and large, you're just looking for something to work. And it's very, very simple. All of you have these multiple different pieces that are out there. You've got multiple different ways to do audio, to do uh, video, to do collaboration. You got all these tools and some of them work well together and some of them don't work well together. Some of them integrate into what you need, some of them don't integrate what you need. And so at the end of the day, what we're hearing most is whatever we have in place, whatever strategy we end up going forward with in this brand new post COVID world, it needs to work without all the craziness, without all the difficulties we've experienced in the last 12 months. Great. How is that accomplished? Number one, it has to be simple. Your employees do not want to learn another complicated tool or business tool. They want to learn something that they either A, A already know or it's so intuitive and so familiar like other people that it's gonna be easy for them to use and adopt. It has to be simple for you if you're in the, more on the IT side to manage. It has to be simple to actually talk to Matrix about, right? And, and to understand the concept behind the technology. Simplicity is huge, it has to be scalable. You don't know what the business is gonna look like or what your organization is gonna look like a year from now. It's gonna to have to be scalable Maybe you're a, a global company, and so you're going to start off here in North America, and you're thinking about going around the globe. Well, it has to be scalable. One of the things that Zoom did back in May, we went from 3 million users to 300 million users in the span of three weeks. No downtime on the service. Scalable. We can do it. Our architecture is ready to help you as you scale at the speed that you want to scale at. So we're really and ready to go. From the innovation side, are we listening to you? Because at the end of the day, obviously innovation has to do with how well do providers like ourselves listen to you and what you say. A lot of companies innovate a lot of stuff that's got no real, um, real world experience for you as the customer. They just innovate it because they have to keep up with everyone else. From Zoom's perspective, our innovation is driven by customer response, what you want to see the system do and what you want to see it uh, feature in it, right? So we're going to be listening to you and we're going to innovate. Again, we own the platform. It's self-developed ourselves so we can innovate very quickly and we can, uh, we can move. I've seen innovations happen where people are like, look, I need it in order to sign up with you guys. I need to have this in there. And we get it done in two weeks, three weeks, because it was a necessity for you as the customer to have the experience that you're looking for. So we will innovate. And of course it has to extend out. All right. It has to have the right implementation of the right integration. I should say, um, you know, a, open APIs and everything else so I can extend this technology 
into not just other locations, that's, that's simple, into other business applications. And so that is something that we're willing to work with. We got an open API and a very aggressive, as you guys know from the Zoom meeting side, a very open and aggressive uh, app store as well. At the end of the day, obviously, you need to make sure you're protected and secure. I think there's one thing that I hear most frequent was, hey, look, I know a year ago you guys had some challenges. Where are you guys at with that? So we'll just talk to the elephant, all right? We are FedRAMP certified up to stage four. So if you are a federal government or service a federal government, we are ready to go. We have the right securities in place for that to happen. Uh, we handle 256 AES encryption on phone calls, video calls, if you would like. Uh, we will probably be, because of, you know, how much public notoriety some of those things were, the most secure UCAS provider on the planet today. If the Queen of England does her official business with it and our current president does his and other high secure high tech companies do it themselves using Zoom, um, we will as well. But we have white papers. If you have further information you want to gather, um, you know, I'll have, uh, uh, I don't know how we do this without the, the, the chat working, but we'll make sure that in some of the links that go out, you have access to this information if you would like to. So we have that, we have a, a website dedicated all to Zoom security. Uh, from an application standpoint, we have one application, all right? No need to put multiple ones on your desktop, no need to put multiple ones on your phone, right? In order to utilize uh, the tool. This is one application, one experience. Again, when innovations occur on our platform, it impacts every feature that we have. And so it has to make sure, I mean, it has to be uh, usable across the different feature sets of the platform. So what you see all those buttons today are all the features that we have of the platform. Again, usually you guys leverage the meetings and webinars, but you can do the rooms, Zoom apps, on Zoom, audio, phone, all these things are all part of the application. It's all a single experience. So to kind of wrap up this section, I wanna show an actual video of um, just kind of what it looks like from going from a phone call through to video call and what it looks like today with Zoom, especially for some of you out there that have the meetings and room application, you kind of want to see what it looks like. Then I'll kind of dive in a little bit to a demo of the actual product itself uh, from a user interface. Hey guys, I want to share with you a couple of features that we rolled out that makes it super easy for you to manage calls and meetings across all your different devices. Let's see this example where I get a call from Katiana. Hey Katiana, can you hold real quick? So I'm going to put Katiana on hold, transfer this call to my mobile device, and I can see it shows up right on my Zoom mobile app. So I'm going to pick up the call here. Hey, I'm finding a room right now. The cool thing about this is it just picks up the nearest available room and I can walk right in. And now I move my call into a Zoom room. Just find my room, click it, and it's easy as that. Hey, Katiana, how's it going? Hey, yes, sir. Let's get on video. Can I share something with you real quick? Yeah, sure. So I was thinking about moving number eight and number nine. Do you think that will work? Yeah, it looks totally good to me. And that truly as easy as it is to go from a phone call to transfer over to a Zoom room, remember, you transfer to a Zoom room, but it was still using the telephony portion of the Zoom room. And then from there, she escalated it to a video call in a Zoom room. So it's really tight integration when it comes to the phone system. Again, the platform acting as one. So let's kind of take a look at that platform and please put questions. And I know Adam is furiously answering them for you. Uh, please continue to put uh, those questions in there. All right, so I'm going to share my desktop here, get rid of my video. So this is my desktop here, and this is my application. And so if I am a user, and I'm a Zoom meetings user, um, what I have, I've got my home button and I got my meetings button, right? I've got the ability to take or, or make video calls and join video calls and I've got access to my calendar. Push pull from Office 365, Exchange and from Google at the moment. We can add other ones as well, but I've got all this access. Now, if I went to bed the day before, that's what I would have seen. Overnight, what happened is one of you went in 
and assigned me a dialing plan and gave me a phone number. I wake up the next day, I log into my system and all of a sudden I've got the ability to chat. I've got the ability to make phone calls. I've got the ability to see all the contacts in my organization, right? And on top of all that, I got the ability to see all that presence as well. Much more than just do not disturb or busy or away or things like that. I got the ability to come in here. Someone could arrow over my name right now and see that I'm presenting. I can arrow over a colleague of mine, Alicia, see that she's in a Zoom meeting. So maybe I can just chat with her. Uh, maybe she's in a Zoom meeting. I see here that our colleague Danny is in a calendar event. All right, maybe I can give her a phone call. Maybe she just has a personal calendar event she's on. Laura down here, one of my colleagues, is on her cell phone. So maybe she's driving. So I'm not going to text her or chat with her. I'm going to give her a phone call, right? So I've got the ability to come in here and see all the AI that you would expect us to have in an enterprise chat messaging service. All right, I've got the ability to have, just like as you would normally expect, ability to come in here, look at all the images that have been shared, all the files that have been sent, right? Uh, any whiteboarding sessions that have occurred, um, all that type of stuff, I can come in here and take a look. I could look at a, a team one, right? So let's take a look at this team here. I can come in and, again, look at all the images, the files that have been shared, look at my members with presence and everything else that I can see in here. So it is a full feature chat and messaging service of which obviously I can come in and click down and invite to meetings, give phone calls, everything else. Again, the phone piece deeply integrated into the entire application. So let's say I have to actually make a phone call. So here we've got uh, two individuals here. I've got Sally over here and I got Matt over here. Um, Sally, if she went in and took a look at her system, when she you know, looked at her phone system, she'd see all her call history with the ability to obviously the arrow over and call them back straight from there. Again, everything you'd expect to see, send text messages, create as a cloud contact, block the person. Maybe it's a, a someone trying to sell supplemental car insurance. We've all had those. She can come into history and view the missed calls. She can come in here and actually view the recordings. If there has been recordings done um, that she has personally done, she can look at voicemails and get transcription service and have that emailed to her as well, right? And so all of those, again, enterprise level communication tools you'd expect to see in a phone system, you're going to see in Zoom. So yes, we've been out for a little bit more than two years, but we are a fully enterprise ready to go. We have, I think, four or five of the Fortune 50 companies um, today as Zoom, uh, US Fortune 50 companies as Zoom customers today. So on phone, and so deploying out, you know, 50, 60,000 users. The ability to have shared lines, that's what you see over here. So Matt and Sally exist in a shared line experience. They're teammates. And so when one goes on, you know, personal time off, uh, they can make and take calls on each other's behalf. And of course, the ability to do SMS and MMS here in North America, we support that as well. Now, let's say that Sally is new. She's uh, just new and she's part of a customer care call queue. And she takes an inbound call. And what you're gonna see is Matt, again, in that shared experience, can accept on her behalf if she wanted to. Sally is going to accept this call and she's gonna have every tool that you would expect her to have in a, again, a modern communication tool. Ability to record. Um, on demand if she wants, escalate this to a video call because it recognizes that I'm a, also a Zoom phone user, I mean a Zoom meetings user, so I can have a Zoom meetings with her. Um, she can call park it if she wants, invite someone else to the meeting. She can add a caller. Uh, she can put on hold, transfer it to another extension as you'd expect, you know, put it on mute, has access to her DTMF tones, and of course, audio sourcing, maybe she's got a different headset she wants to use. All those are available. now. Notice over here on Matt's side, Matt just doesn't exist for her in a shared line experience. In this use case, Matt is also the queue manager. So he's managing this call queue and as uh, customer care, he would like to listen in to the calls that Sally has. So he can, you know, has coaching for later. 
he can whisper in if he wants uh, to help coach her through maybe a hard question that Sally's dealing with. He can actually barge in and take part and be like, oh, hey, I'm the manager. Let me help out Sally answer your question. And of course, hey, I'm going to take over this call and let's work towards a resolution, thereby letting Sally to go back into the queue to take more calls, right? So very, this is a very typical experience in a lot of call centers. Uh, a lot of UCAS today is putting in some of these contacts that are light type features. And so we would definitely have that as well as part of our platform. And let's finally, she's got the ability obviously to change her outbound caller ID to be the direct number if she wants, or it could be the main number, or anyone she's in a shared experience with. Again, she can make a call on Matt's behalf and it would ring as call Matt's caller ID to whoever she's calling back for Matt, right? So from a phone perspective, um, that's what we have. I'll bring my, my main account back up here from a meetings perspective. Again, all my meetings are available here. If I've recorded any meetings, they're all gonna be here for me to go and grab. From a contacts perspective, a lot of things going on. Obviously the business contacts, uh, and with the ability to have presence and call from a phone call or a video call or a chat from my contacts as well. But I also have a few things here as well. I can add cloud contacts. So I live in Arizona. I don't like doing yard work in the summers here as you would expect, no one really likes doing it. So I pay a lawn service to do it for me. So I have that added in as my contacts. Um, I also have the ability to come into external and add external Zoom users. These are people that are external to Zoom that I've allowed to uh, have the ability to be a part of my contacts. This could be restricted from an admin side, but they've also allowed me to see presence and how they're behaving with the solution. Right now, this gentleman is available via chat or to invite to a meeting. This gentleman's available since he's a paid user with phone from a phone call as well, as well as uh, the video and chat. Uh, this person is a free user of Zoom. And so I can still chat or invite to a meeting, but I have presence into what they are doing as an external contact, which is a pretty significant item as well. So my next question to you guys, and feel free to use the, uh, the Q&A, is which of these items, well, let me actually hold that uh, thought here for a second. Um, I think my question is coming too early here. Let me stop sharing. Uh, but actually, no, my question is, anything on the user interface that you'd want me to explore more in at the moment? That's the question I wanted to ask. So anything of that user interface you want me to explore more before I move on? Where we'll talk about the admin and all that type of stuff a little bit later, but from a user perspective, please use the Q&A. Um, if not, I'll move on. All right, looks like you guys want me to move on and I shall. So, let me share here. And there, now we're back, all righty. Let me fit this to the to the screen here a little bit better. All right, now we're back. So one of the things that I think is really important for you guys to see is what are the big value adds here? Enterprise management for scale. I think this is a huge one, the ability to centralize manage this environment from a single point, um, from a single team in a single area. This includes locations, again, that exist outside of local DID presence, you know, with that peering relationship. So you can bring in all of your employees onto a single management platform. The second thing that customers are really enjoying with the Zoom platform is the security. Again, compliance, assessment, embedded security, everything that you would need in order to have secure. We got the regulatory requirements. I'm thinking of your HIPAAs, your, your, uh, you know, uh, FINRA, we're FedRAM certified and SOC2 and all those type things are all part of the platform itself. When it comes to some of our best of breeds, I know last time you had talked to Five9. Five9 is a great partner of ours. And we actually use Five9 internally ourselves and they use us internally. 
And so it's a great partnership we have. We have a very similar integration with your Genesis Nice, Twilio, and Talk Deck. So very deep. So if you're looking at having hey, a UCAS and a CCAS together, we're a great option because we prefer this best of breed uh, model. We have great app marketplace. Some of you want to be wondering about your, your hardware, or maybe some things you have. Uh, we support a lot of typical UCAS hardwares that are out there. From a Teams, so here's the Teams uh, uh, question. So uh, our current Teams integration and better together strategy is a cross launch. So that Teams user uh, would have the Zoom phone on the desktop, the application, and they would have Teams on their desktop. And when they go to make a call, they come down in the conversation and they'd press the call button, let's say, and they could make a call straight from their phone call or a video call, and it'll place the call on the Zoom application. It'll launch it and place it. If they use our Zoom app within the left-hand toolbar here, they can go click on that, and they can just go to a dialer, and they can dial out if they want. But it will take place 100%, 100% on the Zoom architecture. So no part of that call is going in and out of any of, of Microsoft's architecture. So it is a cross launch and it is a better together. It will be branded by us and all that type of stuff. The question is, will we have a direct peering relationship with Teams, which would essentially allow for a Teams user to use the, the typical call behavior within Teams to place an outbound call with someone else the user thinks they're using Teams, but on the back end, that call is going over Microsoft's architecture to our SBC, makes the handoff with Zoom, and then it goes out Zoom. So a portion of that call will be on Microsoft's architecture. Um, at the moment, there is no direction that I have received um, that this is something that Zoom is interested in going down. Now that could change as customers, again, Go, hey, look, we would like to have that more than the cross launch. Um, so, but at the moment, there is nothing that I've seen on the roadmap um, that has anything to do with Zoom having a direct peering relationship with Microsoft. Um, our current Microsoft um, Teams um, integration is GA. Uh, be looking for it in, the, um, in some of your app galleries here in the next few days. Um, and it is this cross launch experience. And so uh, the initial feedback's been very strong from our customers who've been beta testers. They've been very gracious to do that, provide a substantial amount of feedback. And they've actually liked the fact that it's 100% on Zoom's architecture, uh, which is four nines. We will write five nines if necessary, whereas the Teams is three, as most people know. So very, very um, good use case. The other big thing with the Zoom and Teams um, integration is that you can actually add Zoom phone and Zoom meetings to your E3 license. There's no need to go to E5. So that's a big, big, big deal from a cost savings perspective. And of course, there's always costs uh, for you to add the peering on top of that with our providers. And so with Zoom, you can just add Zoom phone and Zoom meetings to their current Zoom or Microsoft E3 license. Uh, which has been very successful for a lot of people, and they've liked their uh, the monies they've kind of saved themselves on a per user basis per month. So that is the the team's strategy. And kind of to round out this section here is going to be the top Zoom phone differentiators. Really, when it comes down to it, what we're hearing from customers is the brand name. You know, they're very um, uh, uh, they trust the brand name. They've been using the brand to a certain extent. Um, already and it's become a trusted name in the business world and that's been very favorable to them. Obviously having the feature rich platform, you don't want to get a communication platform that know it doesn't have what you need, might not have everything that you want yet in terms of innovation, but everything that you need obviously it has to have. So is, is Zoom a feature rich and from what we've been hearing from customers and again Fortune 50 here looking to move forward from the schools having yeah, USC Trojans um, you know, was a big win for us last quarter. I'm moving with 22,000 users, um, something that they felt very comfortable with. And obviously from a packaging standpoint, every feature that we have in our platform comes in every single dial plan. So that monitoring, the automatic outbound call, um, you know, inbound and outbound call recording, 
your call parking, your shared lines, delegation, all those things which tend to be more premier options found more in contact centers or your higher end UCAS offerings are actually a part of every package. So you're going to be very surprised when you go to Matrix and go, Matrix, help us look at this from a, a price perspective. You're going to be very, very encouraged with the pricing that we come up with because we usually are very aggressive out of the gate. We mix and match our plans to fit how you're, uh, you are going to be utilizing the solution, how your employees are going to be dialing the solution. So definitely something to follow up with the Matrix team about. Um, some of our recent customers, I mentioned USC, but we also have Equinix and, and, and Universal Music Group. These are significant big wins for us in the last two, three months. Very common themes, and I can go through every single one of them. But the big key here is they've all of them use, utilize that peering relationship with their locations to some extent. So this is an extensive reason why a lot of customers like yourselves are thinking of us because of that importance of everyone on the same platform today and being able to be centrally managed is a significant um, need of theirs. And we actually provide them with that opportunity. And of course, familiar with the platform since they've already deployed zoom meetings a lot by and large and so moving forward with the phone piece was a little bit easier so here kind of towards the end here i want to make sure we get dive into the admin portal a little bit um thanks uh adam for continuing to work the q a um what does the future look like here at zoom so i'm going to step back and let esther again share a little bit about what we're doing for this return to work type strategy that most of you are thinking through As you all know, how and where we work is changing. So I wanted to show you all the things Zoom is doing to make it super safe and easy for you to re-enter the office. Even from the moment you walk in, you can get checked in virtually through our Zoom Rooms kiosk mode. Hey Deva, how's it going? Hey Esther. And then from there, they can do what's needed to make sure I can enter the building. This makes things like temperature checks super easy. In places like your hallways and your lobbies, you can push out really cool Zoom Rooms digital signage content like your capacity limits or your safety protocols. And then outside of your meeting rooms, you can see how many people are in the room before you even enter. And the great thing about this is not only are you providing your employees with valuable information, IT admins can check things like the CO2 level, air quality, and room occupancy straight from the Zoom dashboard. Once I'm in a Zoom room, I can start my meeting completely touch-free using voice commands. Hello Zoom, start meeting. Hey guys, how's it going? Yes, sir. So the cool thing here is it's leveraging AI. Zoom Room Smart Gallery is pulling the faces of the people in the room and it's pushing it as individual streams so I can have a better face-to-face -face conversation with them. You can also do things like pair your mobile device or your laptop so you can control your room camera, mute your audio, so you don't even have to touch the room controller. All of this is setting the stage for collaboration. So I can share my screen and co-annotate with my colleagues, whether they're at home or in the office, whatever device they're on. And then we can share straight to Zoom chat so that we can pick up where we left off later. We understand that managing hybrid workforces and re-entering the office is gonna be a challenge. So Zoom is here to make that transition as smooth as possible. Thanks for your help, guys. All right, and so that's part of our strategy of this return to work is, is again, seeing UCAS as so much larger than your traditional view of seeing it just as a phone, just as video, or just as messaging. It needs to include so much more in our day and age and our new world. So we leverage partnerships that can go in and actually take temperature checks and CO2 levels and put it out onto digital signage and all that type of stuff. That's all a part of our platform today with our strategic partnerships. And so again, you're going to have to be bridging this world of the home office and the office space and making sure that your communication platform can do what's necessary. Is it agile enough in this new day and age to make these worlds as seamless as possible? Since the majority of you are going to be coming back on rotation or partial or hybrid, we need to make sure that the tool that we have is allows us to be as successful as possible in this new reality. And so this remote and hybrid working, since it is the new normal, this is a nice quote by IBM, really pushing into this idea of making sure that you as a customer has everything that you need to make your home experience as 
productive as possible. And so Zoom has an entire product line dedicated just for the home office. And so again, extending UCAS out in non-traditional ways to making sure that your customers have the great, I mean, you as the customer has the right experience and your employees have the right experience. One of the final things I wanted to note is here is more has to do with our emergency response. What we found is COVID pushed everyone out, but if they had to make an emergency call, it was very difficult for emergency responders to know where they're making the call from if they're using the business service because they're not at their office anymore. And usually the emergency address is the office location. And so what Zoom is doing is making sure that our platform is able to provide the necessary emergency dial and service necessary so that you and your employees can receive the emergency um, support that they need where they are at. And so we do a whole bunch of stuff in there in order to set that up to allow for people to truly we support Nomadic E911. If I'm making a Zoom call to 911 and I'm in a Starbucks line, they're gonna come to where I am at, it's gonna geolocate, it's not going to go towards, um, you know, uh, uh, where my home office is or where the emergency address of my registered devices. So very important. And obviously, from the come back to work, we're going to have people that are going to be in offices that have rotate through. So you're going to have more and more people in more out of the way areas of your office building without all these employees around them. And if they make an emergency call, what does that look like? So one final video here. Uh, to kind of explain out from this emergency calling what Zoom is doing to help you as the customer have a more successful experience with your employees. When we're back in the office, we'll be surrounded by fewer people than ever before. In the past, if there was an emergency, we could rely on people nearby to jump in and help. But with so many people working remotely, we may find that we're the only ones in our area of the office. That's why Zoom Phone added new features to E911 to give you peace of mind in the event of an emergency. If someone calls 911, Zoom Phone will alert two teams simultaneously, the 911 dispatchers and the internal safety team. Members of the internal safety team will receive an alert on their screen and via chat, letting them know the call has been made, who that user is, and their exact location. A safety team member can even join in on the call to provide additional assistance or instructions to the emergency responders. To further assist the emergency services, the safety team can trigger digital signage to help pinpoint the exact location of the person needing help. Zoom phone for emergency services is just one of the ways that Zoom is innovating to help with the safe return back to the workplace. And please, please ask questions. Whoops, I don't want to restart it. Please ask questions on anything that you see in these videos as well. Um, but yes, in there you saw um, the idea that we will notify both the emergency service and the PSAP. So probably exactly what you'd expect it to do from these on-premise ones that do something very similar. So you're not going to lose that functionality. The nice thing though is that we're also going to be able to locate based on where you're at in that office building, leveraging the BSS IDs of the access points and everything else from the network to give even more exposure into where people are and leveraging the idea of all these digital signage across the organization so that if emergency responders, when they get to the building and they're met by the PSAP, they know what floor to go to because the, all the monitors that are up on the walls are pointing them towards where that emergency call took place. So even if it was on a Zoom room, in a conference room, you made that emergency call on the Zoom room, it's gonna notify all the teams and all the digital signage can route the people to where you're at. Again, supporting and working together as a platform to find, making sure that you as the employer are getting the services that you need. So let me dive in a little bit to the admin portion and then definitely answer questions as we go. All right, from an admin perspective, let me pull this up. You're gonna have access to everything that you would expect to see in the admin side. So in this case, I've got my personal settings. I've got my admin settings. I come in here and I've got access to my dashboard, access to the user management to manage my users. Again, 
uh, to put them into groups or to certain roles. Certain roles have certain restrictions on the system. I can come into my room management. Those of you who use Zoom rooms and maybe manage it, this is something very familiar. You do all your digital signage. This is where you kind of can create and upload your digital signage and all that stuff there. Uh, and then from a phone systems perspective, again, I can come in here if I need to set up an auto receptionist. Um, I, I can, this is the auto receptionist from uh, um, Zoom. Actually, I can come in here and take a look at the business hours. Oh, I said it's set to 24 seven, right? So it's going to come in, leave a voicemail, uh, or route through the system. I have holiday hours. I have access hours as well. I come in here to look at the various cues that I have. Everything is available within one to two clicks from the left-hand toolbar. So if I come in here and want to take a look at, uh, um, let's say, your sales, I can come into sales, and I see everything in sales 24 hours a week. This is going to ring everyone at a time. I can upload uh, files for the prompts and while connecting and music on hold, I've got overflows, I've got what happens on holiday hours. Who has access to voicemails? Who has access to the automatic recordings, both inbound and outbound? And of course, I've got access to where I want this recording stored. Here's that data sovereignty. So if you need to have stuff stored in Canada, store it in the Canada, point it towards the Canada uh, data centers. Australia, Australia data centers. Germany, Germany data center. So we're gonna support that for you and for your company and organization. I got shared lines, I got devices I could put on, I got all the monitoring I can do and I can set people up with monitoring. There's a lot of things I can do in this admin portal to make sure I have a great experience for my customers. So um, I wanna take a step back now. Um, and if we have any final questions, we can answer those, but I definitely wanna bring Ryan back in. Um, and to uh, kind of wrap it up. But anything you saw here today of any interest, I really encourage you, that's why you have Matrix. That's why Matrix is a powerful partner for you in helping you through um, kind of all the UCAS world. And I uh, hope you saw something here that was interesting enough to be like, hey, look, let's really take a look at this in further depth. And that's where you have the Matrix team. So I'm gonna stop sharing and turn it back over to you, Ryan. And thanks everyone for your time. Thank you so much, Derek. That was incredible. Truly innovative stuff. Really appreciate it. As you know, that's for those of you that have uh, attended previous events and the ones in this quarter, showing you innovation is what we strive for. And so uh, thank you for taking the time to pull back the curtains and give a little taste of what's possible with Zoom phone. Uh, it's clear that Zoom is now going to take over the world, which is a little bit scary, but you know, <laughs> one piece of the puzzle at a time. Um, there were a lot of questions that were asked during this session, and we only showed a little bit. And honestly, folks, that was my design. Um, we want you to, you know, feel empowered with your Matrix Networks partnership to reach out to your account executive um, and schedule a time to take a deeper dive for what Zoom phone uh, could mean for your organization. Zoom rooms, Zoom meetings, Zoom webinar, Zoom world, right? Um, but reach out to your Matrix rep. Um, and schedule something for your team to take a deeper dive. Um, I want to point out again that this session, along with uh, the previous three, will all be available uh, on our Matrix Networks YouTube channel, as well as in follow-up information that will hit your inbox shortly. Uh, for those of you on this uh, session that qualify, we look forward to seeing you at the end of the month at our bourbon tasting event. Um, and then next quarter's SD-WAN and security conversations. So what we're doing this year, because we can't have awesome events in person, is dedicated siloed webinar series. And uh, next quarter's will be focused on SD-WAN and security. So we hope to see everybody that joined us for this quarter's educational topics join us for that one. Um, you'll be invited very soon, but hopefully you and the members of your team can attend. Um, I've heard feedback from previous events that we have jumped off these before everyone gets their questions answered. So uh, myself, Derek, and some of the others that are on the back end will be sticking around for a few minutes. Uh, feel free to pop other questions in the Q&A or raise your hand. I can actually take you off mute if you'd like and we can have brief conversations. Um, but at this point, this webinar is officially over. And again, thank you for everybody that attended today. And we look forward to seeing you at our next session reach out to your Matrix Networks account executive. Again, thank you, Derek and team. Uh, very excited about thank the you. Zoom partnership and what's to come in 2021.
Awesome. Thank you. Thank you, everyone.